Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are learning the first chapter in chemistry, chemical reactions and equations. We learned the types of chemical reactions, their equations and how to balance it. Also we learned combination reaction and a decomposition reaction. There are three types of decomposition reactions, thermal decomposition, electrolytic decomposition and photolytic decomposition. Today we will learn the next uh, reaction that is called a displacement reaction. Displacement, somebody's place is being removed or changed that is called a displacement. So the reaction in which one element displaces the position or place of another element in compound is called a displacement. So that means a particular element is sitting in its compound or it is with the compound. But uh, yet another element is coming and uh, removing it and takes its position. We will see one equation, general equation. A is an element. B and C are in a compound form. But this A is coming and sitting in B's place. Means displacing B. B's position is removed. And A takes that position with the C. And B is left out. Imagine you are sitting with your mom and watching a movie. Then your elder brother is coming. And he is telling you get up. I want to sit here. Or dad is coming and telling you, you get up, I want to sit here. Definitely you will have to get up or you will get up because they are elder or you are scared out of fear or out of respect, you will do that, right? But if your younger brother is coming and telling, will you listen, please get up or your sister, younger sister is coming. No, you will tell, you go sit somewhere else, right? So this is what is happening here. So your elder brother is coming and removing you from your mom and he is taking the place. Okay, so now you are left out and he is in that position. This is displacement reaction. But why I told it is only elder brother or father if asked you will change otherwise your younger siblings ask you won't because here also that rule is applicable. The element which is displacing should be more reactive than the element which is being displaced. In this case, A should be more reactive than B, only then A can displace B. If A is less reactive, then it will not. Usually this is happening in case of metals. So in metals, we have a reactivity series based on the reactivity nature of the metals in the descending order, starting from the highly reactive ones to the least reactive one. So you have to study this in metals and non-metals chapter later, but it is good to buy hard now itself so that that will help in this chapter also. So to remember this, uh, these are the elements in the order. To remember this, there is a mnemonics. Please stop calling me American Zebra in London. How can my sister go? If you want to learn this, it's up to you. I am just giving you a choice. But if you can make more interesting mnemonics, you can make and also put it in the comment box so that I can share with the other students as well. Okay, so please. So here one thing. Here I have written the symbols. K for potassium. Na sodium, Ca calcium, Mg magnesium, Al aluminium, Zn zinc, Fe iron, Pb lead, H hydrogen, Cu copper, Hg mercury, Ag silver, and Au gold. You should know the symbols of these elements, but this mnemonics is not based on the symbol letter, it is based on the name, starting name. So please, P for potassium, sodium, it's not Na, we are taking sodium S, yes. sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead, hydrogen, copper, mercury, silver and gold. So from this we can see that potassium is the most reactive element and gold is the least reactive element. This we need further in the coming chapters but better you will start learning now itself. So if you can't learn uh, as such, you better learn, write this at one place and keep practicing it. So you know that but whichever one is on top can displace the bottom one from its compound. The bottom one cannot displace. For example, sodium can displace aluminium. But aluminium cannot displace magnesium or calcium or sodium or potassium because they are all above it, right? More reactive. Understood. So now we will see some examples of. Let's see a few examples of a displacement reaction. First, when iron reacts with a copper sulfate solution. So iron is taken as solid, copper sulfate is in aqueous form. 
So copper sulfate is a blue color solution. It has got a typical blue. We say copper sulfate blue. You can see in this picture. So copper sulfate when reacts with the iron, what happens? This iron is more reactive. We can see this iron is here. Copper is below that because my reactivity series is coming here. So iron is more reactive than copper. So iron will displace copper. So copper when goes out, what will be left out? Iron sulfate will be left out. So here this reaction will form iron sulfate that is an aqueous medium plus copper solid will be deposited out. So here two observations we have to say the blue color of the copper sulfate solution fades and it turns into light green due to the formation of iron sulfate or ferrous sulfate. At the same time, a brown color deposit, reddish brown, copper is a reddish brown metal, a reddish brown metal deposit will be uh, seen on the iron. Suppose usually we take iron as an iron nail. So iron nail will have the deposit of uh, copper over it. Another example is zinc when reacts with a copper sulfate solution. Here also zinc is solid, copper sulfate is taken as aqueous form. So copper sulfate is blue, zinc you can see, zinc is here and copper is again below it. So zinc can displace copper. So what will form? The zinc sulfate will form. So zinc sulfate is colorless. So the blue color fades into colorless and along with that on the surface of zinc what will form? The deposit of reddish brown deposit of copper will also be forming. So here you have to see in this case zinc is more reactive than copper. So it could displace copper from its solution. Another example when lead is reacting with lead is solid form it is reacting with the copper chloride solution so this copper chloride is greenish in color when it is reacting what will happen so here also you can see lead is more reactive than copper so lead will be displacing copper so we will get pbcl2 which is aqueous then deposit of copper will be forming so reddish brown copper so here also Greenish copper chloride solution uh, loses its color and becomes colorless lead chloride. Next we will see copper reacts with a silver nitrate Cu plus AgNO3. Copper is solid, silver nitrate is in its solution. So what will form? Here we can see till now we saw copper was being displaced. Now we see copper is displacing silver because silver is less reactive than copper. So this will form copper nitrate. So we can say Cu NO3 twice aqueous plus deposit of silver will be formed. Here silver is a grayish color deposit whereas this is a kind of blue color solution. So what are the observations here? The colorless silver nitrate is turning into blue color copper nitrate solution. Along with that uh, silver deposit is formed over copper strip. Silver deposit is grayish in color. Is this uh, equation balanced? We will just see copper 1 here also 1. Silver 1 here also 1. Nitrogen in NO3. NO3 as such if you see here twice here only 1. So we can put 1, 2 here. So now we have to see silver. So here also 2. So we, our equation is balanced now. Copper plus 2 AgNO3 gives CuNO3 twice plus 2 Ag. So these are a few examples of a displacement reaction. Here we can call this displacement a single displacement also because there is only one element being uh, displaced. Next type of reaction that we have to study is double displacement reaction. Just now we saw single displacement and now we are going to see double displacement. How are they different? In single displacement, one element is displacing another element from its compound. But here, in this reaction of double displacement, two compounds are reacting and they exchange ions between them and become two new compounds. Like the example which I took last time, suppose you are sitting with your mom and your sibling, brother or sister sitting with your dad, then you are switching the position. You want to sit with your dad, your sibling wants to sit with your mom. So switching the position between two the new combinations have formed. Okay, so uh, since two uh, ions are exchanged, it is called a double displacement reaction. Usually this occurs between two solutions, but after this exchange, the product formed out of that one product will be usually uh, precipitate. This usually happens between two solutions but after the reaction one of the products formed will be uh, an insoluble substance. 
what do we call the insoluble substance formed during a chemical reaction precipitate so a reaction in which a precipitate is forming is called a precipitation reaction double displacement reaction is an example of precipitation reaction so we will see one example where sodium sulfate sodium is na sulfate is so4 na2 so4 because the valency of sulfate is 2 it is in solution so aqueous plus barium chloride also in solution i told it occurs usually between two solutions so barium chloride what will you get here actually exchange of ions are taking place so here barium is a, actually ba2 plus and sulfate is so4 2 minus so these two will combine to form a new compound called a barium sulfate plus what is uh, left out sodium chloride okay so barium sulfate is a precipitate forming here it is a white precipitate and sodium chloride is in the solution dissolves it is in the solution sodium chloride is the common salt now we have to balance this equation here 2 na here 1 na so 2 if you write problem is solved here so4 so4 ba ba chlorine 2 chlorine 2 so this is the double displacement reaction between sodium sulfate and barium chloride where barium sulfate is the precipitate form and along with that sodium chloride is also forming another example is between barium chloride barium chloride when combines this is aqueous then combines with the copper sulfate which is another aqueous solution so here also what happens the barium and sulfate again combining because they are friends right so what do we get barium sulfate the same way like this so it is solid precipitate ppt plus what is forming we have copper chloride cu cl2 which is in the aqueous form another example we can see copper sulfate aqueous when combines with the hydrogen sulfide hydrogen sulfide is a gas with a very unpleasant pungent smell so here what happens this uh, copper and sulfur will be combining so what will you get copper sulfide copper sulfide is the solid precipitate but what is left out sulfuric acid h2 so4 that is aqueous will be left out you'll see one more example aluminium chloride here aluminium has valency 3, chlorine has 1. That's why we write AlCl3 plus ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium is NH4, hydroxide is OH. So if these two combine, what will you get? You will get aluminium hydroxide, Al, OH, thrice. Because aluminium valency is 3, OH is 1. What is left out? Ammonium chloride, NH4, Cl. NH4Cl which is in aqueous form this is the white precipitate form so here we have to see whether these are balanced so first we will see the metal aluminium aluminium here also here also uh, one one each then we will see chlorine it is three here here it is only one so we will make it three then NH4 is three here so here we will make it three OH is three so now the equation is balanced so these are the examples of double displacement reaction where exchange of ions takes place between compounds and solutions to make new two compounds. Out of those one will be an insoluble substance called a precipitate. Hope the concepts I discussed are clear for you. If so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.